Hey y'all! You know, ever since Scott did his video on controllers, and especially third-party controllers, I really wanted to share my controller collection, because it's all very special to me, and I have a lot of great memories with all of these strange and wonderful controllers. Uh, going all the way back to GameCube, Wii, Switch, I never owned a Wii U, yeah. I guess I wasn't enough of a virgin. So, I guess we'll start with the GameCube era. So. I have this GameStop brand uh, GameCube controller. It's terrible. So basically, there used to be some sort of rubbery piece on this joystick, but it came off pretty quickly. <laughs> and this D-pad is just no good. And of course, the C-stick, you went for hard plastic because everyone loves hard plastic. Yeah, this controller overall is just miserable. The, the shoulder buttons are surprisingly okay. They're mushy. The final click that the GameCube, um, that the GameCube triggers usually have, it's not as defined. But overall, the triggers are just okay. Um, the C button feels like you're killing an ant whenever you press down on it. It's terrible. And it, it has a turbo button that me and my siblings could never figure out how to get working when we were kids. So um, yeah, that's my. GameStop GameCube controller. It's not good. It does have this cool silver looking wire, which is always nice. Um, when third party controllers do something fun with their design, that's always something that I can appreciate. Uh, one controller that actually did do that pretty well, even though it's not a great controller. Wow. Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. Hori. Um, or no, Naki. Naki. GameCube controller. It is not the best to play with. The sticks especially feel like garbage. It's definitely not the greatest. And even though the face buttons and um, L and R buttons are okay, even the Z button feels pretty similar to a regular GameCube controller. Actually, the L and R buttons look almost identical to normal GameCube controller um, pieces. It's not the greatest. I like how there's a radio radioactive danger sign for the A button. That's cute. Uh, but I don't really like how the buttons get in the way of the Hulk's teeth. I think if they could have moved them somewhere else, that would have been fine. And it looks like they're supposed to be, like you can see here, something like an insert or something. Um, maybe this shell was used for a bunch of different controllers and that's just how they used it this time. And it's also got this um, rubbery grip, which I don't know, that's never really helped me. Um, the D-pad, oh yeah, it's terrible. It doesn't even have a central pivot, and it's like a shield-type D-pad, except it's really not good. It's so bad. Uh, of course, it's a third-party controller. You've got to have a turbo button. Start and clear, I think that's for also for the turbo function. Um, actually, the stick, underneath here you can see it's just a hard plastic. I don't even think there was anything on top of it before. It's just hard plastic. And it was so bad that a while ago, I um, I super glued a piece of silicone over it. I think it was from an old uh, DS game cartridge case. You know, one of those old silicone ones. Um, I sw You've had one of them, trust me. Uh, but I, I kind of just glued it on top. And honestly, after doing that, it's not as bad, but the stick still feels really inaccurate and loose. Um, but the main thing about this controller is it has a lot of rumble. It's kind of crazy how hard this thing rumbles. Um, I don't have it plugged into anything right now, so I can't really show you, but trust me, it is crazy. It's really fun. All right, so moving on to the Wii, um, this here was my controller. It is a regular Wii controller. It had a had a battery pack that you could plug into it. I don't use the Wii much anymore, but um, this was a good controller. It was the one that I got with uh, Wii Play, because everybody got Wii Play. Scott was right. Everyone got it. It's a Wiimote plus $10 more for a game. Who could pass that up? My family did not. We got another Wii remote. <laughs> and then, of course, I had two siblings at the time. So my older sister got her first Wii Wiimote, I got the one that came with Wii Play. Well, what do you get my younger brother? Uh, you know, the makers of the bread box. Mad Cat's Pure Black Wiimote. It is not the best. It's really light, 
feels really cheap. Um, I think this one's just straight up broken, it doesn't even work anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The A and B buttons, they feel really loose, not very clicky at all. The 1 and 2 look like, feel like mashed potatoes, it's terrible. Um, plus, minus home, like they're tactile buttons, how do you mess that up? But um, one thing that I'm really particular about in all my controllers is the D-pads. I'm not sure if you've been able to tell. Like, this GameCube controller, this D-pad, not the best. Really loose, really wiggly, doesn't feel very accurate. This um, Hulk controller, you can push the entire thing in like a button, and rocking it back and forth, it's not the greatest. It's super stiff somehow, and super loose at the same time. <laughs> not good. This. It's just as bad. Like, the Wii Remote already has a marginal D-pad. When you put a whole bunch of Mad Cat's jank into it, it's not the best. Um, one of the coolest things about Nintendo products is, you know, Nintendo is the creator of the D-pad, so of course their products have some of the best D-pads around. Uh, and the thing that they pioneered with D-pads was putting the cross on a central pivot. And you can tell what D-pads have a central pivot and which ones don't. The ones that don't, you can push the entire thing in, and that's the sign of a really poorly made directional pad. It's just not good. And the print was really cheap, so all the high touch, high use buttons, all the ink has rubbed off so you can't even see the one and two anymore or the plus and minus. Yeah, it's not the greatest. Um, we didn't actually use our Wii a whole lot as a Wii. We actually played a GameCube games more often than we did Wii games, so I guess that's just interesting fact about me. And so I actually have three whole Switch uh, controllers. So first off is this absolute piece of trash. Oh my gosh, this thing. Okay. This thing was going for $70 at retail, the same price as a Pro Controller. Why would you ever buy this instead of a Pro Controller? Okay, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, this is the Emeo Switch Pad. Uh, it's unlicensed, so that's how you know it's good. They couldn't even put Nintendo on it. It's just Switch Pad. <laughs> that's how you know it's bad. So, um, yeah. <laughs> the D-pad, you know, you can push the whole thing in. It's got no central pivot. It's really not that fun. Uh, the sticks are tiny. They are not the greatest. The grip is not great. For some reason, the right stick feels a little stiffer than the left stick. Uh, not the greatest. And these buttons in here, they're placed kind of awkwardly, all squished together. But the thing you might be looking at this thing and going like, oh, well, you can take this faceplate off. Yeah, that's the weird thing about it. It's supposed to be for multi-generational games, and it, you can take all of these things off and replace it with any of this garbage. Yeah. <laughs> it's really not good. Um, so it comes with a N64 style, GameCube style, Super Famicom style. Honestly, the Super Famicom one, it's actually pretty neat. The buttons are all okay. This normal one, this normal looking one, is really the only buttons that have good enough click to them where they're actually satisfying and decent to use. Um, it's not the greatest. I think this one, this one's actually just broken now. <laughs> I got it on sale for like $30 because it's a piece of garbage. <laughs> It's so bad. Um, and I think the funniest thing, the worst part about it, oh man, is the shoulder buttons. So L and R, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but they're really clicky, tactile buttons. They're miserable to play with. And then it's, you can't tell from this video, but pressing this trigger is terrible. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> it feels like you're squishing something, like pushing down on a bowl of rice or something. It's not good. And then, ah, this left trigger. <laughs> there's, there's a funny story behind this left trigger. Um, so, 
one day when I was playing Breath of the Wild, this was like in the early days of when I got my Switch. I think I got it in, I got it on Black Friday 2018, the Mario Kart bundle. Um, so the L, the ZL button wouldn't stop pressing and it was like on turbo and it wouldn't stop pressing the L button. So I literally opened the controller up and removed the ZL mechanism from the controller itself. It is, yeah, that was a fun night. And so ever since then, I haven't touched this controller once because it is absolute garbage. <laughs> All right, so the next one I have here is the PDP light up controller. I am a big fan of this controller. It's really nice. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can tell since it's, you know, lit up in this room, but in a dark room, or even in a moderately lit room, this thing looks gorgeous. Um, I'm not sure if you remember the Rock Candy Wii remotes. Gosh, I was always so jealous of people who had those back in the Wii days when, you know, I had to deal with this and uh, this. Yeah, the best. Um, PDP fully licensed by Nintendo, so they can say Nintendo Switch on here. Um, this cost me $45. It was, it's $50 normal price, so I guess I got it for $5 off, which is pretty cool. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It feels $20 cheaper than a Pro Controller, but, you know, that's because it is $20 cheaper than a Pro Controller. It, the grip is kind of eh, just, it could be better. But that's a sacrifice you're going to have to make when you want to make the thing completely clear, which, by the way, have I mentioned? It looks so, so cool. Completely clear. The D-pad, it's okay. It's got a nice rock to it. Um, it's got that central pivot that you've got to have on a good D-pad. Uh, the shoulder buttons, they feel okay. They are pretty similar to the Pro Controller uh, shoulder buttons, but they've got a little more give to them. But they've got a good amount of snap and a good amount of travel which is great. Um, the A, B, X, Y buttons, these are actually really nice. Um, so it's got a good amount of snap, a good amount to give. They've actually got a little more spring than the official Pro Controller, which I find actually pretty good for some games like Smash. Um, the sticks, gosh, I think this is where they cheaped out the most because it's made of a noticeably cheaper material than the real Pro Controller. It's less rubber and more plastic, but um, it's fine. Um, after playing it for a couple hours, uh, it's not that bad. Honestly, I highly recommend you get this controller if you like things that light up. And speaking of lighting up, oh man, there's a bunch of different settings on this. Right now, I've just got it set to purple. Uh, I really like this indigo looking color, but you can change it by holding down this button and pressing on the D-pad, and it cycles through colors, and then you can press the D-pad, or not the D-pad, this little button, and this, and the sh uh, bumper, and it flashes, and that's really cool. And if you do it again, it rotates through all the colors, and okay, here's my favorite. If you change it to this, what happens is it changes colors when you move the stick. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, this is awesome. Uh, the left stick controls what color it is. The right stick controls the brightness. Oh man, I've, I played for this. I played with this, not even playing games, just with this one feature for so long when I first got this. I love this controller. And of course, you know, it's got the two pro buttons on the back. I I really don't use this a whole lot. I bound it to um, clicking in the stick since that's not used in a whole lot of games. So it's uh, the least obtrusive thing that you could bind it to. And one thing that this controller got a lot of flack for was switching the positions of plus and home and minus and capture. Um, Honestly, that hasn't been a huge problem for me because I don't think that I don't feel like they switched the position. They kept plus and minus where they are. They just moved capture and home from down here to up here, which it's, you know, it's okay, I guess. 
Uh, one of the things I really like is that this controller is made by the same manufacturer as this. They're both PDP. And so now I've got a matching set, a switch dock and controller, both lighting up. It is beautiful. Like, I could stare at this for hours, and honestly, I have. <laughs> and finally, here is the Hori Switch controller. Um, it's this, this one, this is interesting. This was actually the first controller that I bought for uh, my Switch, a like a month or so after I got it. Um, it's okay. So the sticks, they're really not that great. The grip that they've used, it's not textured at all. And the ridge that was on it wears out pretty quickly. I played this, um, I played Smash with this controller pretty heavily. So it's, it's worn off a bit. Uh, one thing that I really don't like is how the A button hangs off the side of the controller so much. That's weird to me. I've never liked that. Um, but the buttons are fine. They feel pretty close to the Pro Controller, the Switch Pro Controller, but, you know, with the... <laughs> it's hanging off the side. Wow. Why? Me oh my. Um, it's got turbo. Of course it's got turbo. You know, you can press it or always have it going, turn it off. You know, nothing real special. Uh, the plus and minus, instead of plus and minus, like, printed on a pick on a button, they shape the buttons as plus and minus. That's fun. And so, uh, one thing, and one more thing, the triggers are okay. They're closer to, um, Xbox looking triggers than Switch triggers, but they feel like Switch triggers. It's just got a different shape. And honestly, they're pretty okay. Um, they feel a little bit looser and a little less springy than the Pro Controller, but I got this for $20. This is an amazing deal for anyone who just needs a controller and needs a controller now. Uh, it's probably the best controller for value. There are some that are like $25, $30. I know the wired GameCube controller, but honestly, if you're getting a wired GameCube controller made by a third party, you're asking for disappointment. Um, so, the last thing about this controller, I've been saving the best for last, is this D-pad. You might be thinking, wow, what the heck is this? Well, you see, you can remove it, and it's got four buttons underneath it. Uh, it's a gimmick. But I found that this controller is actually my go-to for a couple of games. Um, the sticks aren't great, so I don't play it in Smash that much. I usually use the Pro Controller or this thing for Smash, but this D-pad, it's really loose, which most people wouldn't like, but the regular Pro Controller, and especially this light-up controller, the D-pads are a little bit stiff. So this loose D-pad is really good for rocking back and forth. I have a really unique grip when I play Mario Kart specifically, and um, I don't use the stick, I don't use tilt controls. Oh yeah, this doesn't have tilt controls, obviously. Um, so what I do when I play Mario Kart is I rock the D-pad back and forth to steer rather than using the stick. I feel like it's more responsive and quicker. Um, and it's really, really good for that. It's actually fascinating how much precision I can get out of this, even though it definitely doesn't look like it should. For most games, however, it's not the best. I tried playing Tetris 99 with it a little bit. Um, didn't work out so well. Mario 35 didn't work out so well. Uh, for most games, it's not the greatest, but for a few specific games, it's really, really fun to use. Uh, also, in Mario Kart, there's a couple items. You know, the, um, the Golden Mushroom, the Super 8, the um, Piranha Plant, where you mash the item button as quick as you can. For that, what I do is I use the turbo function. It's kind of like cheating, but not really, so I can get the maximum usage out of a golden mushroom if you're into that kind of stuff. I don't know. So, you know, pop this baby off. What do we got on the back? Uh, well, you see, you can store the D-pad in the back. I thought that this was going to wear out, but I've had it for almost three years, and it's held up way better than I thought it would. So, 
look at this. It looks like, you know, the buttons that you'd see on a regular Joy-Con, but I found that they're actually quite different. Rather than having the tactile feel, it's a rubber switch. So um, it feels like any of the other buttons on most controllers. They're actually very similar in give and push pressure and travel to the regular face buttons on this controller. Um, one of my favorite games, Crypt of the Necrodancer, uh, I'm not sure if you know that game. They got a sequel with The Legend of Zelda. Maybe I'll throw up some gameplay on the screen right now if you're not familiar with that. Um, this, this is really good for Crypt of the Necrodancer. Uh, it's so... It's so incredibly intuitive to use each of the four buttons as separate inputs because, you know, you're pressing on the beat uh, every beat. And so... It's so much better than using a regular D-pad for that one specific game, and that actually blows my mind. Uh, because you don't want to hit diagonals in the game, because that messes you up, you uh, skip a beat or lose a beat, and <clears throat> it's really nice. The buttons are fine, the shoulder buttons are fine, the gimmick is actually useful in a few situations, and let me remind you, this controller was $20. That's a deal. So, yeah, that's, um, oh my, oh man. I, you realize now that we really are a third party family here in my household. Yeah, this is my collection of third party controllers along with, you know, a bunch of garbage. <laughs> some of the controllers are garbage, some of them are, some of the controllers complete trash. Some of them are really nice. Some of them have big gimmicks, and some of them are really cheap. Though, honestly, all I can say is, if you want a third-party controller, just buy it. Most of the time, people who are buying third-party controllers aren't really the biggest suckers for um, having the optimal gameplay or perfect controls. And as a stupid eight-year-old, I couldn't tell the difference between this and this. So. For what it's worth, third-party controllers are a great addition to anyone's uh, library, not library, collection, if they really need that player to. So yeah, I think, what, what do you think that I should buy next? I'm thinking I should get, I really want to get one of those um, GameCube style controllers. I know I said that a third-party GameCube controller was asking for disappointment, but I, I really want to get started collecting controllers, because I really think controllers are really cool. Um, you know, Scott's actually inspired me to start looking through my old controllers, seeing what I've got, picking up old games with different controllers, trying out all the new games I've got with different stuff, and it's really cool. So, you know, tell me what your favorite controller is, your favorite third-party controller is, and, you know, I'll see you later.